All right, let's go ahead and get started with what I think is one of the more exciting ways to be a software engineer, and this is to use Copilot inside of the GitHub ecosystem. So not just by itself, but with Visual Studio Code, with GitHub Codespaces, with GitHub, all of those things together allows you to level up, right? In the old days, when I first got started with Python, it was amazing, right? I got into Python and I was like, wow, you know, I can do all these things, script code quickly, move at the speed of light, it's amazing. That's really the same feeling when you level up to a more powerful language like Rust using Copilot. It's really that original Python experience, but the difference is you have a modern language, a modern packaging system, you have 50 times better energy efficiency, you have 25 times at least better performance for computation, you have better uh, you know, memory usage because it's a very memory uh, efficient language and also in terms of security, right? You're building a very safe concurrent uh, you know, build through the compiler and also safe from a cybersecurity perspective. So there's all these awesome advantages. So really the question is, is it worth the, the penalty to use a slightly more complex language? With Copilot, it is because you can use the existing knowledge you have as a Python programmer to apply that to Rust to level up your company. So I think this is gonna be an emerging skill in 2023 and Python programmers don't have to throw away everything they learned. They can apply that with the techniques I'm about to show you. All right, let's go ahead and get started. All right, let's take a look here at a Rust new project template using the GitHub ecosystem. And really, this is the magic, right? This is why Copilot allows you to level up your existing Python programmer. You wanna to go to the next level. I would highly recommend GitHub Codespaces plus Copilot plus Visual Studio Code. This is the secret sauce, right? So if we go through here, we take a look at this. We have a Docker file that configures my environment with all the things I need. We also have inside of here a dev container that configures features, for example, like Copilot. And in addition, what this means is that I can start this whenever I want uh, with a new project, right? And so this is really the secret here is I just say, hey, I'm gonna go ahead and use this. I wanna test my code automatically. Everything is set up for me. Let's go ahead and use this template. Let's say create a new repository. Go ahead and select uh, the additional options here and pick a, a, a nice powerful machine so I can compile my code. And All right, so we're inside of this environment here. Let's just double check that everything works. One of the things that we can do is look at this make file here, which is a great idea to initially have in your project. If I type in make Rust version, what's nice about this is it tells me all of the nice things you know, the, the version of Rust, all this stuff. And this comes for free, right? This is the big difference with Python. You don't have to do anything. It's just, it's ready to go. So if I wanna create a new project, what do I do? I just type in cargo new, um, hello Marco, right? Let's go ahead and build a, a Marco Polo app. If I go through here, look at this. I have a packaging system all set up for me. So what I need to do here is inside, put the dependencies that I care about. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and put a, a command line tool uh, library here called clap, which is a really po popular one. And then it's up to me to decide the structure. So if you're a Python programmer, I would recommend going through here and going to source uh, and actually first CD into the to the directory and then uh, touch source and make a lib.rs. And this is where I like to put my logic. And, and here is where we also can build out some, some amazing things here by using Copilot. And this really is allowing us to, to leverage uh, essentially our skills from Python. So we can first create a comment here that says, you know, a Marco Polo game. And, and then it's up to me to create the right prompt. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, you know, you know if the name uh, Marco uh, is given, the program will respond with Polo. Otherwise, we'll say, what's your name, right? That looks pretty good, right? So, so it's just like a real person. We just need to, to, to prompt it correctly. And then I'm gonna say as well, some, some additional prompts here. And it's up to, to us, again, to, to really kind of guide it, right? So we, we, wanna, we wanna do some stuff, here we go. And, and it, as long as you're helping it along the way, it's gonna, it's gonna give you a good response. And in this case, we say, look, public, so expose this to my main, uh, module, which I'm going to use for a command line tool. And then look at the rest. It's it's actually pretty intuitive. W look, we have a string here for the name. 
we, we do some stuff with a string and then we return a string, right? Very, very intuitive. Now let's go to the main here. And the trick with this is a lot of times all command tool libraries are boilerplate code. And so what I'll do is a lot of times if I'm building something, you know, I'll just cut and paste it from some other program to, to again, help our, our prompt here. So I'm gonna go ahead and just throw some stuff inside of here, you know, a command line tool to play Marco Polo, Marco Polo game. And this is all just boilerplate code. The, the big takeaway here is that you map a subcommand to the function that you've created inside of your lib. And this is almost identical to Python, except for again, I get 25 times better performance. I can deploy binaries, all this other cool stuff. Once I've done this, I again can uh, just look, okay, yeah, I wanna, I wanna pass a name into this. And then uh, what'll happen is I just ask Copilot to do the rest for me. And, and look, let's see what it does. It says, you know, uh, in this case, there's one thing it screwed up. All right, so now we see that it's been able to generate a, a reasonable suggestion that's not perfect, right? I wanna, I wanna tweak it a, a little bit. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I'm gonna instead of letting it do the print name here, that's not exactly what I do, right? I wanna send it Marco Polo. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say <clears throat> instead, uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna tab and I'm going to say let results and then I would guide it to the the fact that I have a namespace in the the module that I can use and so this is one of the things that may trip you up a little bit when you're first using Rust is like hey wait what is this what is this you know namespace is that this in fact is what's inside of this cargo file right it's, it's this name and so you have to actually map it to be the same name now again what I could do here is I could just say make format and just see what happens if I format my code. Does it clean it up a little bit? And what does this do? It says, fail to use unresolved create. Well, in this case, it is resolved because that's actually the name of the, oh, actually the, the create name is incorrect. It, it the, the, um, the linter was telling me the right, right thing. So we have to change it to, in fact, um, hello, Marco, right? We have to say, hello, Marco. How about that? There we go, right? So this is where the analog tools, right? The, the cargo system, as well as the copilot work together, right? The formatter, the linter, all this stuff works together. And then I just keep iterating to get the solution. Look, if the lint passes, we're in great shape. And now I can use the final part, which is I can actually go through and run cargo to execute it. So this is a lot like running thing from the Python interpreter. All I have to do is type in cargo run, dash dash and if we do the the double dash right here it passes in some command back into our program and here we go it's going to compile it now for the first time and the rust compiler is just amazing because it does all this really cool uh, stuff to, to make your program safe and, and fast we can see that it works and now i can type in play and we can type in marco and this should return back in fact uh unexpected argument play because we need to do dash dash name right there you go polo and if i put in bob right it'll say what's your name right so th this is a a, a great uh, feedback loop and again look at this target here if i just go through here and i say um target debug and i type in the uh, hello marco here look at this right we see in fact i get that executable so this is a huge win over regular Python, in my opinion, because of this fast feedback loop, the ability to use Copilot to level up and also to leverage this existing tool chain to, to have a feedback loop. So it's an emergent property of these new pair programming tools available from Copilot.